Hello everyone, and thank you so much for coming to my session today. Today I'll be talking about bad coding and transaction logs, a dangerous combination. A little bit about myself. My name is Francisco Munoz Alvarez. I'm an Oracle ACE director since the year 2009 and Oracle ACE since the year 2008. I have a few certifications with Oracle and everything started also uh, after being a beta tester of Oracle 7 and a member of the first team to introduce Oracle to Latin America. I also the spoke person for IOC for Latin America and Asia Pacific plus the president of APACO UC, the Chilean Oracle User Group, the New Zealand Oracle User Group, and also the Independent Australia Oracle User Group. I have won a few awards during my career and also presented over 460 sessions at 48 countries around the world. Uh, my blog is oraclenz.com or .org or .net. My email, in case you want to contact me, is alvarez at cloudDB.solutions. My Twitter handler is FCO Munoz. In case you want to contact or follow me, I, I'm just tweeting about free videos, uh, uh, free events, and everything related with community. Mm, uh, I'm trying to avoid most of I can everything related with marketing. Also, I want to talk about uh, my book, Oracle Database 12C Backup and Recovery Survival Guide. Uh, this book, I think so, is the only one that I know they have a full chapter about logging or logging. And that chapter was reviewed and working with a very good friend of mine, Tom Kite. Um, I also this founder and CEO of CloudDB. And saying that, let's get in started. Just before that, as I mentioned, I don't like to talk too much about marketing. I want to let you know that CloudDB is a global uh, professional manager service uh, company that have many community leaders working with it. And we uh, give many self, uh, services as monitoring, alerting, manager service, consulting, project consulting, and cloud services also. Basically everything we've related with database and cloud services. And our headquarters are located in Australia, in Brisbane. We have also offices on Sydney and Perth, also in Auckland, New Zealand. And we were opening a new office in San Francisco, but that got on standby due to the current pandemic situation. And we'll be, we'll, we're planning to have that office open very soon. And let's get basically started with the session today. It's a lot of content. I have a hundred slides to give you in just a few moments, a minutes. And we will be talking basically about transaction logs. And this is started for uh, the reason to create this session was basically back in 2008. Uh, talking about this topic, I basically got number one of the forums of Oracle Technology Network at that time for databases. And that's basically lead me to become an Oracle ACE back in 2008. And even today, if we stay, take a look, a look back, my company, I will say our largest clients currently are using MySQL. In MySQL, one of the more things that we respond to most alerts and we see a lot of issues happening is exactly regarding with transaction logs or read the log in Oracle. When in MySQL, MySQL, you're going to see basically the story uh, history land going high because the the database itself is produ producing too much read or basically transaction logs. And that basically in Oracle speaking, may use a lot of undo and consequently uh, Oracle is using a lot of space and effort to keep the integrity of a transaction. And that causes uh, many effects and stress to the database. And that's basically what we will be seeing today. The goal of this session and talk about the transaction logs, uh, basically the redo generation in transaction logs and see how we can improve that, see some tips and best practice and see some ways that we can help DBAs and developers to improve that code to reduce a, a, a transaction a log generation and help that to not affect your database performance, integrity, and what's very important, also recoverability. Saying that, we're going to be talking today about redo generation, what's redo, 
what's logging versus no logging, some frequent questions, some interesting points, uh, some tips when using no logging operations, some tips when using login operations, some frequent problems, and then the conclu conclusion. Okay. This thing right here in your screen is something very important. Redo generation is a vital part of your Oracle recovery mechanism. Without it, an instance will not recover when it crashes and will not start in a consistent states, state. That's why redo generation is so important. But by the other side, excessive redo generation is the result of excessive, excessive work within the database. That means they can cause some effects that we will, is not good for the performance of our database. Uh, no login operations do not generate read records in the read log files. Only a notification that a no login operation was made is registered within the uh, uh, read log file, but not the changes itself. Cons consequently, such operations are very helpful option to reduce the amount of redo to be generated in a transaction, which might make the transaction to run faster and also reduce any unnecessary stress to the database. But be aware, anything we do have a cost. And that's why you need to be uh, sure about when using no login operations, because as you see, it will affect the recoverability of your database. Also need to understand, as I mentioned before, that no log operations are direct path operations. Consequently, they bypass the buffer cache. If you direct path load, say 100 megabytes of data and that outfits in the buffer cache, a conventional path load might be much faster than a non-log direct path load. You don't, want to, you don't want for the blocks to be written to disk and the redo is streaming to disk in the background by the uh, log writer process. On the other hand, if you are loading gigabytes of data more than can be buffered in the cache, then you might benefit from direct path write since you you will be waiting for the DB writer process to empty the cache all the time. That makes a lot of sense because if you're going to load a little bit of data or make very small operations, it will, will not be their benefits of using basic no login operations and you placing the recoverability of the database uh, on, on risk by nothing. But by on the other hand, if you're doing bulk uh, operations that you load in gigabytes, uh, mega, uh, terabytes, or a lot of data, they may, then it makes sense to make use of no logger operation. And the cost benefit is, is good to basically you put in risk your recoverability of database, but reducing the impact on performance of your know, database and make the load of the data, one example, very fast and efficient to uh, do not impact people for too long. And the way, as I also mentioned, the impact recoverability, to avoid that, I always recommend and will repeat many times during this presentation, always do a backup before a no login operation and always do a backup after a no login operation. Why? because you need to have an option to roll back and also an option to recover after a no login operation that is impossible to recover out that a book load you did without making a backup after that because that book load is not registered in the read log files. You always need to remember that read generation is a crucial part of the Oracle recovery mechanism. No login operations only affect the recovery from media failure perspective. Do it you then we will need to recover from a backup and apply all the available archive logs in the recovery process, but will not affect a database in case of instance failure. On the other hand, excessive generation of read is the result of excessive workload of updates, insert and delete operations, basically DML within the database. There we go with a tip, a very impet, uh, important rule with respect to data is to never put yourself in an unrecoverable situation. The importance of this guideline cannot be stressed enough, but
but this does not mean that you can never use the time savings or performance enhancing options. Again, to don't put yourself in a recovery situation, always do a backup before no login operations and only do backups after you complete the no login operations. If not, you will not be very popular uh, in your company and I can guarantee your boss will not be happy with you. But let's get started with basics. What is Redo? If you go to the uh, Oracle documentation, you have a very long answer, but I like to go straight to the short answer that in other words, Redo is equal transactions within the database. When Redo is flashed from memory to disk, very by the log writer, very simple. When I, every time a user issue a commit, when the log buffer is one third full, when the amount of read entries is one megabyte every three seconds, or when a database checkpoint takes place. But you need to in, uh, understand that's not when all this happen or not when one of these happen. Basically, in the worst case scenario, if no other uh, options happen, is every three seconds, the database will do basically flush everything from log buffer to the log, uh, by the log writer to disk, basically to ensure the recoverability of your database. That means the radio entries are written before the checkpoint, just also for that too, to ensure recoverability. Um, the main purpose of Redo, as I mentioned before, the Redo generation is to ensure recoverability of your database. And that's one of the things why Oracle databases are so important, so trusted and leaders in the market. And that's something that you need to understand. Uh, Oracle does, does not give the DBA or the developer a lot of control over Redo generation, because if a stance crashes, then all the changes within the SGA will be lost. Oracle would then use the read entries in, uh, in the online read log files to bring database to a consistent state. Let's talk a little bit about logging versus no logging. Despite the importance of the read entries, Oracle gives user the ability to limit read generation on tables, partitions, table spaces, and indexes by setting them in the no logging mode. No login affects the recoverability of the database. And before going into how to limit the redo generation, it is very important to clear the misunderstanding that no logging is the way out of redo generation. Basically, no logging is designed to handle book inserts of data, which can be easily reproduced. Remember that the update in delete operations, the normal update, the normal delete, we always be logged. We always generate logging. Basically, always generate read. Regardless of logging status written to the under blocks, we always call generation of read also. That means a transaction that generates the undo, we always generate read. Logging should not be disabled in a primary database if it has one or more standby database. For this reason, Oracle introduces the forced login option uh, uh, and means basically the no login attributes will not have any effect in the segments. Basically your database independent, if you uh, throw a no login operation, they will always force login. They will always ignore the no login. Uh, the force logging can also be used on table space level instead of the database level. Using this option results in some performance degradation, of course, because they ensure that everything is always logged, everything is always recoverable. But as I mentioned before, this ensures and protect the recoverability of a primary database that consequently will protect the integrity of your standby databases. That means in other words, if you have a standby database, always place your primary database on force logging. That's part of best practice. Using force logging in the initialization parameter file in a multi-tenant container database, we always place all the pluggable databases using that CBD in the force logging mode. 
Another interesting point, any change to the database dictionary will also always generate a reader. This will uh, happen to protect the data dictionary integrity, not the user data, basically. As per example, if Oracle allocates a, a space above the high water mark H, uh, for a table, and then use the, 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 and the system fails in the middle of the insert append command, then Oracle will need to roll back the data dictionary change that was made. There will be a redo generate, but it's only to protect the data dictionary, not your newly inserted data. Oracle will undo the space allocation if it fails, and your newly inserted data will also disappear. Objects should be set back to login mode when the no login mode is no longer required. That means if I want to do a book insert in a table, I will place that table in no login mode. I will do the book operation. After I finish, I will place that table back in login mode, basically to protect the recoverability and to ensure that reader will be always generated from now on. No logging is unnecessary for direct path inserts if database is no archive log mode. We are going to see some examples in a moment. Operations involving data that should not be easily reproduced should always use the logging operations. Avoid using no logging in such cases. If that's loaded using no logging, the data will not, will not be able to be recovered when the database crashes if no backup is made after the load. Remember? always do a backup before no login operations, always do backups after no login operations. No login does not apply to normal update, insert and delete operations. That means normal DML uh, commands, we always generate redo, consequently, they will always be logged in the read log files. No, log, no login will work during specific situations only but subsequent DMO operations over the data will always generate a redo. We will see a list of specific commands that will work when using no login mode. A little bit longer in this presentation, a little bit later in this presentation. Just a resume, we have a lot of people saying, okay, I am doing, I place my table in no logging and I'm doing insert update and delete and it's still generating redo. Why? We will see that why. If the login or no login clause is not specified when creating a table, partition, or index, the default, uh, the default to the login attribute will be the login attribute of the database. Or if it's not set, the table space in which it resides. That means if a table space is set to no login, any objects that are created inside that table space will fall on the same uh, default of that table space. If it's no logging, the objects will be no logging. If they are logging, they will be logging. If a table space don't have a default, then will be made as per the database default. All right, some interest, more interesting points. If, uh, if you have my database in archive log mode and I have a table in login mode and I do an insert append, reader will be generated. If I have a database in archive log mode and do and I place the table in no logging and do insert append, then no read will not be generated. If I have a, 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 my database in archive log mode, my table is in logging and I do a normal insert, read will be generated. If I have my da, my database in archive log mode and I have now the table in no logging and I do a normal insert insert without the, the append. Read will be generated because, as I mentioned, normal DML commands, insert, update, delete by itself, they will always generate read. Does it matter if the object is in logging or no logging? Now, if I have my database in no archive log mode and my table is in logging and I use the insert, uh, the insert append, no read will be generated. Now, if I have my database in no archive log mode and my table is in no logging, I do the insert append also no read will be generated. That means doing insert append or uh, um, uh, will in a no archive log mode, doesn't matter if the object is in logging or logging, they will never generate. Read. That's a different behavior. Now, if I have my database in archive log mode, I have the table in logging 
and I use it normal insert, read will be generated. Now, if I have a table in no logging mode, in the archive log mode, but I do a normal insert as a same as example and we discussed it before, read will be generated because normal DML commands as insert, open date and delete, we always generate read. It doesn't matter if your object you're trying to work with, a table, an index, uh, they are in no logging mode, that doesn't matter. When do insert mode append, it isn't append really. It is the fact that you are doing a direct path operation that will bypass undo, hence reducing redo, and may bypass redo when in no logging. Remember, every time you generate undo, you generate redo. That's uh, one of the key rules. If you using doing, when you do a, a direct path operation, you bypassing undo. As a consequence, you're not creating undo, you're not creating redo. That I hope that makes sense. Some frequent questions we're going to see in just a moment. Does creating a table with the no login option means there is no generation of redo ever, or just that the initial creation operation has no redo generation? But does the DML down the road generate redo? How and when can the no login option can be employed? As I mentioned before, if you create a table in no login operation, only specific commands, direct path operations, will not generate a redo. Why? Because they are bypassing undo. But normal operations, even if your table is in no login, like normal DMLs, insert, update, and delete, they will always generate redo because they are generating undo, and Oracle need to protect the recoverability of that transactions. Some other questions. Why I have excessive redo generation during online backup? You do not have excessive generation of redo during online backup, just a change of behavior. When we talk about online backup is when you place your database on backup mode and then you start and in, in decide copying the, the files to your backups. That's what's called online backup. I'm not talking about our men. When you place your database on online, uh, when you do a, a normal backup, basically what they do, you just copy the, the changes, the block changes to the database, and dump from memory to disk to keep the integrity and do your backup, one example, when you use the RMAN. But when you do an online backup and you place your database on backup mode, Oracle to protect yourself, they will not only dump the vector changing blocks from memory to disk, they will dump the whole blocks, everything from memory to disk, to allow the integrity of the blocks on the disk, and then you copy the proper data. As a consequence, that is the radio generation that you think because now you're dumping more information from memory to disk, the whole blocks instead of the vectors that change it. Hope that makes sense for you. Uh, why Oracle generates read and undo for DML? They exactly as I mentioned before, they generate and read and undo uh, for DMLs to protect the integrity and recoverability of the database. Uh, yeah, and we're going to see a little bit more examples in a moment. Last per example, I already spoke about redo generation in online backup. I was already spoke about why Oracle generated read and undo for DML. Does temporary tables generate re uh, a redo? Before 12C, the amount of log generation for temporary tables should be approximately 50% of the log generation compared with permanent tables. However, you must consider that an insert requires only a small of amount of undo, whereas a delete requires a small amount of redo data. If you tend to insert data into temporary tables, and if you don't delete the data when you are, you are done, the relative log generation rate may be much lower for temporary tables than 50% of the log generation rate for permanent tables. But now after 12C, in 12C, temporary tables re record their undo into temp, removing all redo, what's fantastic. Note, temp files are always set to the no login mode, but any non-direct path operation on them, such as in normal DMLs, Commands in serial update and delete will generate redo because they generate undo, as I mentioned a few times already. Can redo generation be disabled during materialized view refresh? Setting the no log option during the materialized view creation does not affect this fact. 
as the option only applies during the actual creation and not to any subsequent actions on the materialized view. Enhancements requests having been raised to be able to turn off redo generation during a refresh, but these were rejected as doing this could be put the database into an inconsistent state and affect options such as data gar as well as backup and recovery. The amount of redo generated during a complete refresh can be reduced by setting atomic refresh to false, that parameter, in the DMS underscore and view dot refresh option. The complete refresh will use a truncate plus insert uh, append command to refresh, and this can skip out undo and read out of it. Basically, they will do a direct path uh, operation. Why my table on no login mode is still generating read As I mentioned before, if you don't do direct path operations, doesn't matter if your table is no login mode, they will not work. That means if you do a normal DML operation, such as insert, update, and delete, they always will generate undo. As a consequence, we always generate read -o. Hope that makes sense. It's important to note that just because an index or a table was created with no logging does not mean that redo generation has been stopped for this table or index. No logging is active in some situations and while you're running one of the valid commands, but not after that. Can a table redefinition be done using no logging? Table redefinition cannot be done in no logging. In other words, it still, it still needs to be in the logging mode. It will always generate redo. This is some example of direct path operations in screens as outer table, merge partition, modify partition, and rebuild in usable index, out a split partition, rebuild, rebuild partitions, and so on. Now let's talk about no login operations and some interesting facts. Okay. Now with regard to no login operations, as you mentioned before, the no login attributes, the Oracle that the operation being performance does not need to be recoverable in the event of a failure. Failure. In this case, the database will generate only a small set of metadata that is written to the log, read log and the operation will probably run faster. Oracle is relying on the user to recover the data manually in the event of any failure, not Oracle. In other words, the no login option skips the generation of redo for the affected object, but we will still log many things such as data dictionary changes caused by space management. The option unrecoverable introduced in Oracle 7 and no login introduced in Oracle 8 can be used to avoid the redo entries to be generated for certain operations that can be easily recovered without using the database recovery mechanisms. But remember the unrecoverable option is deprecated and replaced by the no login option. Okay, another uh, list again about direct path operations. You have direct loads using SQL loader, direct load using the insert append hint, create table as select or CTIS, uh, creating index, move partition, split partition, if uh, add partition, if has hash partition, that's its example. Another example, if login is stopped only while one of the commands in the previous slides is running. So if I, uh, I usually run this, outer index, in new index, no login, and then do a outer index, new index, rebuild, the actual rebuild of the index will not generate redo, only out data dictionary changes associated with the rebuild will do. And this rebuild of the index, instead of drop and recreate it, will be a lot faster. Afterwards, throw any DML operation in the index will generate the redo. And this included a direct load insert on the table to which the index belongs. And I always recommend if you do the outer index, the name of the index, no login, then you do the rebuild. Then I recommend you to place the index back in login because you want a uh, login to be uh, uh, created. Here's another example to make this point even more clear. I do a create a table, table no log test in no logging. As the following states will only generate a redo despite the fact the table is no logging mode because I'm using normal DML operations, normal insert, normal update, normal delete, and they will only generate undo as a consequence, they only generate redo. 
But if you have it done, the comments on the top using an insert append or any command such an outer table move or move partition, then read will be skipped. Uh, let's see some scenarios in no archive log mode. In no archive log mode, uh, I create a table, test one, a select with all the uh, data from DBA objects as a structure, but without data, and the table was created. That table is empty. Now I set auto trace on a statistics. Note the set auto trace on a statistics statement will show only the SQL statement execution statistics after the execution of one SQL DML statement, such as select, delete, update, and insert. Then I did a normal insert to that table using the normal DML command insert I, uh, from all data from the DBA objects. Basically, I inserted 88,012 rows. You can see that the redo size that was generated was based 11 megabytes of redo size generated for this simple insert. Now, if I use the insert append, as you know, when no archive log mode, I don't need to place the object in no, no logging to have benefits of no logging. I can just do an insert append that they will assume as a no logging. And you look, if I did the exact same insert, but instead to use the normal insert, I use the insert append, I insert the exact same amount of uh, rows, 88,012, and only 36 kilobytes of data was the riddle was generated instead of 11 megabytes. Huge difference. Can you, uh, that show is the point of benefits you can have by using direct path operations because they skip undo, they skip consequently riddle, and also no login operations. A tip. You never need to set no logging when using no, uh, databases no archive log mode. Everything that can skip read will skip read already. No logging doesn't apply in the no archive log mode. It doesn't change any behavior. All right, just one second. Let me check one thing. Great, I was able to activate my camera that also you can also see me during the presentation and that's even better. Uh, to activate the no login mode when using an outer, outer command, you will need to add the no login clause after the end of the outer command as for example, outer table test one, move a partition party underscore 001 on table space in new underscore TS underscore 001, no login. The same applies to create index command and the create table command. An exception to this is when you do a create table as select and use a no logging at the end of the command, then the operation will not use in the no logging mode and instead will generate an alias called no logging. That means you need to do create table as select, the name of the table, no logging, and then you're ready to go. This is a common mistake to add the no login option at the end of SQL when using a select statement. And you, that's, as I mentioned, is very, very common. This is one example, create table, table, no log test two, no logging, a select is start from DBA objects. You can see the table was created. And then I did exactly the same, but they put the no login at the end. You can see the test two table is not generating logging but the test three table that I put no login in the end is generating login. That means it is ignoring the no login command option because it's taking us uh, an alias, not as a no login enforcement. Uh, tips when login is in effect, when I mean when you're not using no login, that is when you have a primary database or when you want the database to generate all this login. These are some tips that's very useful for DBAs and developers too. I recommend you to please pay attention to these ones. The best way to eliminate this problem is always when doing backups is using RMAND. Do not using the uh, 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 user backups. If you need to use a backup and place your database in backup mode, please do not use the whole outer database begin backup command. Do Alter that uh, the table space with a table space begin backup and end backup. 
I mean, place table space by table space uh, on backup mode, and then do the backup of the data files regarding that uh, table space. And you start by doing so with the less used uh, table space, and then you do the most used ones at the end in a time they are not that busy. Uh, when you do book inserts, always, uh, I, I use the term book insert in this section to mean loading a large percentage compared with the existing data. That means I, I, I have uh, 5,000 uh, uh, rows and I adding another 50,000. It's a lot of more rows that is over there is a book insert that I make use of. But if I'm going to insert one record or five records, why I would care about, that's not a book insert. To reduce or eliminate the amount of readers generating a book data load, you need first to disable the indexes when make a direct load to a table that have indexes. And because the indexes also produce read before the load and then rebuild them again as follow. That means first thing I will do is make the indexes associated with the table that I want to do the book insert unusable then do the insert append to that table, do a direct path operation to do the book insert. And then I do the index rebuild of that index. Remember, we are talking about options with logging. We are not talking about no logging operations. That means we are taking advantage of direct path operations that reduce under generation or avoid complete under generation as a consequence reduce or completely avoid reader generation. That's why we use the insert append as a direct path operation here. And then we use the outer index rebuild that is also a direct path operation. Uh, please ensure the initialization parameters keep inusable indexes set to true before making an index inusable. If set to false and a user tries to ask, access data from a table that within the is with an indexed inusable, it will return an error to the user session. Also, it's important to know that prior 10G, the skip usable indexes was always set at session level. It didn't have the option at database parameter level. Let me see, create a new table with this. Uh, when I do book deletes, sorry, um, I'm just getting a few texts when I'm uh, recording the presentation, apologies for that. When I do a book delete, again, I'm talking about delete a lot of data within a table. Please create a new table with the same structure as the table you want to book delete from with only the rows you want to keep as in the following example. Create a table, new table, as select from this source table with the where clause of the, object, the rows I want to keep it. Then creating indexes in the new table, all the constraints, the grants, and so on then drop the original table and then rename the new table to the name of the original one and you're ready to go. Uh, another option that you have for book inserts, if the data remain after this step two is very small, or if there is a lot of dependencies on the table in the form of views, procedures, functions, and so on, then following step can be used after this step one to move forward, basically. I will do the step one that create table just with the data I want to keep using create table or select. Then truncate the original table through the deletion out of the date. Remember the truncate is a, a, a direct path operation that do not generate much read. Then disable all constraints on the original table. Then insert back all the original data that is in a temporary table that you created to do insert append. Then commit your changes enable the constraints on the original table again, and then drop the new table that was the temporary table that you created in the step one. If you need to do a book update, use the method in this section if indexes are going to be affected by a book update, because a massive updating on indexes is more expensive than rebuilding them. If a small portion of the data is updated, then use the first approach. First one, disable all constraints, then making all indexes associated with the columns that will be updated unusable. Apologies, as I mentioned before, then we will start by disable all constraints, 
making all indexes associated with the columns to be update unusable. For example, author index, index name unusable. Run the update on the table, commit the update, and then rebuild all the indexes that you made unusable in step two. As for example, author indexes, index name rebuild, and enable all constraints you disable in step one. That's the step number one for book update. Now, if the updates cause a change to all the data uh, basically will be updated, then follow this second approach, approach. Create a new table to be used as a holding table and modify the amount of the column value at the same time you create the table. Basically, you're going to do a CTAS, a create table, a select, doing the update in the process, as you can see the example in the screen. Then create all the same indexes on the new table as exists in the original table. For example, create the index IDX text three on test three owner. Then create all grants, constraints, and so on on the new table. Drop the original table. And finally, rename the new table to become the original one. This is the, uh, like I say, the boring part. But now a fun part, in my opinion. The scenario two, do things the easy way. Always the easy way is the better way. Let's see why I'm saying this. All right, a tips for developers, especially, and also for DBAs. Let me just move my camera to the side, there we go. Run the DML as in few statements as you can. This will reduce the generation of undo and block header updates and therefore reduces redo generation. What that means, okay. Let's see how I can make use of making the things easier, it's better. Let's create a table, create a table test for a select owner, object name, object type from DBA objects. The table was created. I would then put set auto trace on statistics and just do a normal insert, a normal DML that will generate the reader normally insert into test four, select owner, object name, object type from DBA objects. Okay, 88,019 records were inserted. And we can see right here, then basically I had four megabytes of redo generated. It's a lot, right? Yeah, four megabytes is a lot, but we are not trying to test the comparison version, uh, uh, login and, and no login operations, but okay. This is normal login, normal DML. We got four megabytes. Now, how do you think a normal developer would like to do that insert in that table? Most of the time, you're going to see they will create it a PL SQL. And many DBAs don't take that wrong developers. Also DBAs like to do create PL SQL and they will create something like you can see in the screen. A PL SQL, they will read my table, DBA objects, and will create a cursor. They will insert all the data uh, uh, in the table, and then we'll do a commit in the end, correct? That's good. What do you think the behavior of redo generation between the first normal insert and now a cursor? Will be better, will be worse? Let's take a look. All right, let's see how different they are on, uh, on the background. Okay, how much redo was generated using the PL SQL? Oh, 26 megabytes instead of four megabytes. That means you can see the PL SQL generate more redo to insert row by row than a in normal insert that basically is only one command. Simpler, the better. And even in the situation that if I put the commit instead of commit in the end and commit record per record, the reader generation jumps from before 26 megabytes to 52 megabytes. That means always uh, doing commit after a good number of uh, instead of transactions better, they do record by record. That's something uh, interesting uh, for everyone. Do you want some, a few more tips? Let's go with one more. Set sequence to catch to catch correctly. This is important since your system generates a lot of sequence number using the Oracle sequence. 
the data, the database keeps track of the next sequence number in the SGA, but it's also kept the starting value of the next set of sequence numbers in the da data dictionary according to the sequence cache settings. This is starting values is needed in case database crashes, of course. As a sequence next value is acquired, the value in the SH SGA is updated. When the value in the SGA is the same as the one in data dictionary, the data dictionary is up to date producing readle. If the sequence cache is small, the data dictionary will up to date more often, causing more readle generation. So if I uh, create one example as a uh, sequence two that I keep in on memory two, cache of two, a sequence 20, when I create uh, caching 20 sequence of memory, Cache 1000, where I uh, sequence 1000 when I caching a thousand sequence of memory. And let's use them and let's see how this will behave. All right, I created a sequence, sequence two, sequence 20, sequence 1000. I did the insert of sequence two. I did the same, it was uh, using for 88 or 25 rows created. I did the same for the 20. I did the same for 1000. And let's check the results. Do you think they all behave the same? I don't think so. The cache, caching to a sequence of memory for all this uh, exercise we did here with inserts for the, the sequence two for inserting 88,025 records generated 32 megabytes of readle. Doing exactly the same, but using the uh, caching the sequence, 20 sequence of memory only use it 4, 000, uh, 4 megabytes instead of 32. And when I catch it, 1,000 of sequence of memory, we only generated 1.4 megabytes. You can see how this helped to reduce in reader generation. Managing the amount of reader generated by the database take a partnership between the DBA and developer. To the next extent, you can uh, to the extent that you can work with your developers to implement the discussion tips to educate them about the value from implementing those tips. You can reduce reader and make your job easier and your database more efficient. That's basically what my DBA team do with most of our clients. We work together detecting the transactions that are generating the most transactions uh, logs within the database, getting the information back to the to the users to try to reduce that, check if it's issues related with indexes, if uh, uh, the way the code is done, if they are doing commit too often, and so on. We work together as a team to solve that kind of issues to basically improve the database performance and in other cases, protect the database availability for the users because no access to data is a big problem to the companies, big problems to everyone, and we need to ensure that they're always available the, worst, the best, pay, best, best possible way. Okay, now same tips when using no logging. <coughs> they are very similar that before, always try to use the direct path insert, the insert a pen. Uh, let's uh, just skip this because we don't have too much time and already this, uh, uh, spoke a lot. In the same insert that we saw the PL SQL in the example before, you can do change the normal insert inside the PL SQL by a direct path uh, insert, uh, a user append, that will help a lot to solve the issue that we saw before. Uh, or do just a normal insert, uh, uh, insert append. You can see here many examples. My presentation is available to download from my blog. You can go to oraclenz.com, oraclenz.net, oraclenz.org, and go to the presentations tab, and you can find the presentation and download. You can find this at Redo uh, or No Login Presentation 2 as a name. And let's just skip this. If I need to do a book insert, let's just go right here using No Login Operations. Uh, to fully reduce reader generation when doing a book insert, we will make use of direct path, path direct path operations, sorry, with that will help you to skip under generation, consequently skip reader generation and maintain the index in book, hence less read. What I'm going to do first, I will set the table that I'm going to do the book insert on no logging using the outer table, no logging command. Then I will make all the indexes associated with that table unusable 
by using the outer index unusual. Then I will, do, I will do the bulk insert by using the append hint, insert append into table select. Then I will rebuild all, uh, I will rebuild all the index in, as unusable and no login at the same time. I will do outer index, name of the index, rebuild, no login. That I will set the table back to login mode. I will set all the index back to login mode and I will do a backup. Remember to do a backup after our book inserts and even recommend to do a backup after, as I mentioned many times and before. Note the creation of index with no login will save space in the read log files and decrease the creation time. It will end faster when parallelized large index creation also. But do not forget to backup our affected data files and perhaps move them over to a standby database if necessary. If I need to do a book delete, now go create a new table with all records you want to keep from the original table with the no login option. Basically, the exact the same step we look before when logging, but now using the no logging uh, uh, operation uh, command on it. Then create the index on the new table with the no login option, then create all constraints, grants, and so on on the original table. Drop the, the original table rename the new table as the original table, place the table and now indexes to the login mode and back up the data. If the amount of data will be left is very small compared with the original number of rows, but there is many dependence as we saw before also as an example in login, I will create the table as before with no login of create a select with the no login option. Then I will disable constraints in the original table, truncate the original table, make indexes related to the original table unusable, place the original table in no login mode, then do a direct inset now to move it from my temporary table to the original one that was empty because we truncated, do a commit, rebuild our indexes using the no login option, enable all constraints that were disabled on step three, place the original table and our indexes in login mode again, back up the data and drop the temporary holding table. If I need to do a book update, I will create a new table to be used as a holding table and modify the amount as the, the column, uh, as we saw in the previous example with the login one with Nasitas, but this time with the no login option on it. Then create our indexes on the holding table or temporary table as you wish to call, as they exist in the original table, specifying the no login on it. Create our constraints, grants, and so on drop the original table, rename the holding table to the original name, and after tables are all related, and after alter the table, and now related index to become login again, and then back up the data. And some common problems you will see when doing uh, this kind of operations with no login or, or so, you can see block corruption due to no login on a standby databases. Basically, you did the operation in no login on the primary, then you need to switch over. The data was not logged. That means it was not replicated to the standby. And if you try to access the, log, the blocks that are not replicated, they will be marked as corrupted and you will have uh, problems over there. Recovery problems. Oh, I didn't did a backup after I did a book insert. Now I'm trying to recover, but I cannot see that data. I cannot recover past the, that no login operation. Excessive log switches on book transactions when doing login and doing big login operations and they are creating too many log switches and every time a log switches happen, a checkpoint happens and basically everything from memory get dumped to disk and if it does happen too often, what's happened? A lot of stress to the database and contention. Then you start seeing log file parallel write, uh, waiting times, log file sync and so on. And this is the error going to see if you have, do a no login operation in the primary database, then you switch over to the standby and try to read a blog that was uh, reading and no login. And when that happened, exactly when the DBA is sleeping and your boss will not be happy that your fail-proof system of high availability was not that fail-proof at all. That means you will have a lot of explanations to do. Uh, repairing no login chains in a physical and standby database, you can do that. You can repair uh, transactions that were done in no login, a primary to be available in standby. You can follow 
uh, these steps. I will not, I don't have time right now to go through all of them, but you can review that on, on downloading my presentation. And also I have a paper on that, if a white paper available on my blog too. Flashback and no logging when fl using flashback database with a target time at which a no login operation was made, a block corruption is likely to pro be produced in the database objects and data file affected by the no login operation. For example, if you perform a direct path insert operation in the no login mode and that operation runs between, let's see, 9 a.m. and 9.15 on July 7, 2015, a lady required to use a flashback database to return on the target time of 9.07, exact time between the no login operation happened. Then the object that the file is modified by direct path insert may leave the database with block corruption after the flashback database operation is completed. Tip, if possible, avoid using flashback database with a target time or SCN system charge number that coincides with a no login operation. Also, always perform a full or increment a full or incremental backup of the affected data files immediately after a no login operation is done to ensure the recoverability to a given point in time. If respect to use a flashback database to return to a point on time during operation, such as rec path insert, consider to perform the operation in the login mode to ensure the recoverability of it. Remember, once again, always do a backup before no login operation or just do a backup after each no login operation. Saying that, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me by my email, alvarez at cloudb.solutions. Also, you can find me in LinkedIn, you can find me in Facebook, you can find me also in Twitter with my handler is F-C-O-M-U-N-O-Z, Francisco Munoz, and I will be glad to respond. You can also uh, uh, contact me uh, directly uh, at any time. Saying that, I want to say thank you, everyone. Thank you for the patience and listening for this uh, long presentation. It's kind of a complicated uh, uh, topic, but I hope this, this kind of tips of clearance, cleaning some of the misconceptions that we have about transaction logs will help you to make user betting of logging and no login operation, direct path operations, understand what DML works, uh, uh, learn that every time your operations generate undo will always generate redo and also the difference of operations a uh, direct path operations how they behave when your database is archive log or no archive log mode please once again i promise by the last time always do backup before no login operations always do backups after no login operations and say that thank you so much I hope you enjoyed this presentation and hope to see you face to face in another session very soon. Thank you to all. Have a wonderful day.